we're going to have a live audio commentary over is, to my mind, the best episode of Transformers that was ever made. I wholeheartedly agree with this statement, it is absolutely 100% fact. You can't say anything other than this, that will make me change my mind. So, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Bob to do this special audio commentary track, the writer of Wardon, the writer of Rebirth, the writer of Crimson, so many of us, he was the most prolific writer of Generation 1 Transformers cartoons, Mr. David Wise! So the idea is now, is that there's a lot that this episode has going for it, some of you may know, some of you may not know, so Mine's way louder. That's probably a really good, probably a really good thing. Uh, right, so if we can... Can't be too... You underestimate the power. Um, so if we can queue up the episode... Yes. Pull up the seat. Wow, screen door vision. So, I suppose the first question that we've got is, can you tell us a little bit about sort of the genesis of where this episode came from? <sighs> yeah, um, I had done a two-parter called uh, the Key to Vector Sigma that had uh, created the Aerial Bots, and I, want, uh, I think they actually said do another Aerial Bot show. And I went, cool, because I actually think we had some more, they weren't, they weren't quite fully Autobots yet. So I thought, wow, what if we took them back and showed them the start of the whole war between the Decepticons and the Autobots, so that they have to, it sort of forces them to choose a side. Um, by the way, this is the few times you actually see Decepticons doing anything really violent to human beings. This, this, this whole episode is, is, is probably the most violent single episode of Transformers. They're about to dump a bunch of fully grown, mature human beings out the bottom of a plane. Um, anyway, at the time I was writing it, there was a film that was very, very big in America, and probably here too, called Rambo, and, which I actually thought was sort of nauseating. And there was this, anyway, basically, it's this character is this macho shithead who, uh, and, and, and all of these kids just idolized him because he had big Sylvester Stallone muscles. So I thought, okay, I'll do that with the, uh, with the aerial bots, where they, they actually sort of idolize mistakenly the uh, uh, Decepticons because they are so free and open with their display of power, like in this opening sequence, uh, and then realize that it's not really about having the power, it's how you use the power. And again, that sort of went back to Rambo, because basically what he's doing, the guy's a bloody fascist. So, uh, sorry to any Rambo fans out there. Uh, but, and, and then the irony, of course, is at the end of this thing, there's Prime unloading like Rambo on Megatron. And I went, oh my god, I couldn't get away with it. He's like, I'm your worst nightmare. I'm like, I wound up writing Rambo. I wanted to deconstruct it. I wound up writing it. There we go. The Aerobots just impossible. Of course, all those people would be dead in real life, kids. Just what you're talking about regarding the idolizing. Right, right. Well, and also they would relate more to them because they are aircraft. And the Decepticons are by and large aircraft. You know, it's really funny. Now that I think about it, when I was writing The Secret of Omega Supreme, I thought, oh, we're getting aircraft in the end. We're going to make this big deal about finally we have all of our aircraft. And about three years later, I went, wait a minute, didn't I write this thing about power line? Aircraft and What's the big deal? Okay, there's that sort of quasi Japanese Korean code that only Teletran 1 gives you. Or, no, nothing human would put numbers in that order. And the endless flips. You watch enough of these and you really get sick of the flips. Ah, So, can you my favorite 
toy set and he's got his tracks and everything. I'm sorry, what? I was just going to say, because you obviously introduced the aerial watch in episode previously right. with the King of Echo Sigma, um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the process of creating those characters and, and bringing them into the show? The process of, re of creating them? Well, I thought of, I thought it would be in our well, okay. Uh, the way it started was like this. Hi. Oh, there's people here. Um, oh, uh, uh, I'm going to turn my back to you now. Um, Bryce Malik, who was one of the story editors, called me up and said, we got these new characters called these Aerobots and these Thundercons. The Aerobots are Autobot planes and Subcon cars. And um, we want you to do a two-parter where they're both basically created from scratch. And oh, by the way, they get their personality from this thing called Vector Sigma. And I said, what's a Vector Sigma? And Bryce went, hmm, that's a good question. I'll go ask Sunbow. Sunbow was the production arm of Hasbro, basically their ad agent. And so Bryce went to Sunbow and said, what's a, what's, what's a, what's a, uh, a Vector Sigma? And uh, Sunbow said, it's the thing that gave the auto, all the Autobots and Decepticons their personalities. And if you worked on the show, you knew that there were like rundowns of all the characters, these cheat sheets that had their personalities, and there were like one word personalities. You know, Omega Supreme was taciturn. That was his whole freaking personality. That was all we were given to work on. So they go, it's the thing that gave the Autobots and the Dream and the Decepticons all their personalities. And Bryce says, well, it must not work very well. These guys don't have any personalities. So, anyway. Uh, I'm a little off topic here, but I thought it was, here is an interesting way to do characters who are almost like teenage Autobots, because most of the Autobots are basically hormones, and being teenage, they have a certain level of angst. they have a certain level of confusion, they're just sort of figuring out their picture of the world, and they don't really know which side they're on, and that to me was really interesting. Um, whereas with the Stunticons, who unfortunately are not in this episode, it was more like, Wow, let's just do Mad Max. Because think about it, you know, Decepticon of Cars, that's like total Mad Max. So, in fact, you may not know this, but it was originally the Key to Vector Sigma Part 1 and Key to Vector Sigma Part 2 is the, the title that is on screen, but there were subtitles originally. It was the Key to Vector Sigma Part 1, um, Rage of the Stunticons, and Key to Vector Sigma Part 2, Fury of the Aerial Bots. <laughs> I love those titles. <laughs> like so over the top. Anyway, so um, they had, the Aerobots had really finished their evolution. Really, this to me is like part three of the Key to Vector Sigma, in a way. And that was something really which you played with a lot. And you were really the only writer in season two to have his own continuity, essentially. Don't yeah, yeah, I have very much my own continuity, apparently, especially as regards to Constructicons. Anybody uh, know what we're talking about? The Secret of Omega Supreme, which apparently contradicts all sorts of existing continuities that nobody ever told me about. So I didn't know. I didn't even know that Omega Supreme, you know, thought, you know, energy, low, must rest. I had him talking like a normal guy, so they had to cover it by throwing in a line of dialogue at the beginning where time says, Omega Supreme, just as once, couldn't you talk like a normal guy? And he goes, okay, just this once. <laughs> so here we've got the aerial bots getting taken back to the Golden Age of Cytrus. Yeah. Again, something that we hadn't seen except for one or two frames. And we'd like heard about it. There was enough that you would have heard about it, and I probably read about it in some other scripts. Remember, all these scripts were written like virtually at the same time. You talk about, fans think that the first 65 are like seasons one, two, and one and two. But really, for the writers, it was just one season. It was a season where basically over the course of about 10 months, all these scripts were written, which meant the story editors were working on like four or five scripts at once on any given week. So they were not written particularly in continuity. And the reason I could do continuity, frankly, was, aside from the fact that I, I have a penchant for that, was that I wrote so many scripts, and I was so fast, and I was kind of like their go-to guy. There's another one of those sort of random numbers. 
What I really like about this episode, the thing I really wound up liking most about this episode is that the aerial bots, oh, they already traveled, they've gone backward in time now. There's a great scene where, which one is the, who's the Decepticon who's like, uh, sort of convincing them to join? Starscream. Oh, Starscream, is he yeah. the one going, and boy, do we have fun! Yeah, that's right out of Pinocchio. That's Honest John and Pinocchio going, Oh yeah, the internet just swell! You love it! <laughs> uh, not the first time you've dropped in a few No, 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 no. Oh look, you see it, it's really made of gold. Because gold is such a durable, solid metal, you know. And it doesn't melt easily, doesn't bend easily. Um, but um, uh, what I love is that the, the aerial bots travel in time but not in space. And you're seeing basically where the where the Autobots are in the present is where the aerial bots and in Orion Pax and everyone is in the past. It's this dome. You see the ruin. There's even that bit at the end which I just love, which is the dissolve from from the actual dome to the ruined dome in the in the past in the past, the ruined dome in the present. The headless uh, guardian robot is in both time frames. Uh, and, and to have a time travel story that takes place in the same spot in different times is very unusual. I like that about it. And here we have uh, a writer on um, Dion. Yeah, there he is. Uh, very funny. There's Ariel. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that that's not Peter Cullen. What do you think? I don't think it is. No. Uh, so, these three characters, I'm assuming every, we're not going to spoil it for anybody who doesn't know who Orion Pax is, right? Yeah? Um, so, where did this Wait, idea... Wait, who's Orion Pax? So, where, where did this idea come from to... Because uh, obviously you said you wanted to... Where did it come from? Yeah, where, where did... Right there. Right there. Um, I, I, wanted, I, I wanted them to make friends. And I wanted to see their friends get killed. And at some point, so that they would be horrified and realize, oh, Megatron is a bad person, not a good person. Uh, and then at some point in plotting out, I thought, well, why not make one of them reincarnate as Prime? The only glitch to it is that Prime apparently has no memory of this, which I sort of cover in my head by saying, oh, you know, come on, he was shot. It's circuits got scrambled. And he actually says at the end, oh, so that was you guys who did that. But uh, I always intended for the other two to just be dead. Uh, uh, the line about uh, turning uh, Ariel into a leader one was added after I turned in the script, I assume by somebody at Hasbro. Um, and uh, fans, I don't know, anybody follow me on Facebook? If you don't follow me on Facebook, follow me on Facebook. I have a really weird Facebook name. It's David Wise, W-I-S-E. Very hard to find. There's only about 800 David Wise on Facebook, but you can probably find it. Um, anyway, uh, uh, there was a conversation on Facebook about this, about, well, who did, you guys say Dion, I call him Dion, as in Dion and the Belmonts and the Wanderer and all that. Uh, uh, who did he, you know, reincarnate as? And I'm like, he reincarnated as nobody. Why does everybody have to be rebuilt? He's dead. He died. If these guys, if you can just rebuild them every time they get mucked up, there's no danger. It's like, oh, look, here come 10,000 Decepticons, you know, with, with photon beams aimed right between our eyes. But it doesn't matter, because if we get blown up, we'll just become something even cooler. Now we're no, dead, dead, dead. Oh. Now, uh, yes. speaking of dead. Oh, yeah, here uh, we go. Here we go. Yeah, this was meant to be as shocking as I could possibly make it. First by killing the girl. You weren't expecting that. And then he gets shot in the shoulder. And now there's a cut there. But if you were to read my original script, you would see it reads like this. Close on, on Megatron and Orion Pax. Megatron fires his photon blaster, striking Orion Pax in the shoulder. Another angle. Megatron grabs Orion's wounded arm by the wrist, yanks it off of his shoulder, and swings it backward. Another wider angle, Megatron swings Orion's arm like a scythe and lops Orion's head off with it. And I went, they'll never shoot this, but I'm putting it in there, baby. 
Because I wanted it to be, I wanted to horrify. It's all about horrifying the area bots into realizing, you know, who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And here they are. Finally, I mean, there's one of the leader, uh, who's the leader, Silva Yeah, is, is on to it the whole time, obviously, but the rest of them are, are suddenly like, <laughs> oops. Uh, yeah, maybe we're on the wrong side. But for this to work, they had to become friends with Orion Max and, and Ariel and Dia, which, you know, that was very tough because these scripts are like 21 minutes, and we've already got the whole time travel thing and the whole, all this stuff, and then to have them, you know, build a friendship. And they basically become friends in like about six seconds, I think, at the time. <laughs> Of course, now we've got the subplot going on with the, the, the Decepticons finding the Guardian robot, right, which right, right. later on. Right. Right. I like the design of, of Orion Pass. He, he does sort of look like a, a kind of an early peace, peacetime version of the. Uh, these are the guys you wanted to be panels with. <laughs> Speaking of younger versions, yeah, there you go. And, and that voice. He sounds like about 18, but he's got a mustache. So here's what I want to know. How do you grow a metal beard? He doesn't have his beard yet. Rust. It's a rustical, like the Titanic. No, they're not. I did not, not my dialogue. Uh, no, you can't. Hey, can I ask a question? What the hell is Alita One anyway? I never used her in any of my scripts. That's the only mention I've ever heard of her is in this show. When, in what episode is she Optimus Prime's girlfriend? Uh, search for Alpha Triumph. Okay, is that season two? Yes, it came out prior to this one, I think. So I think that had already been. Oh, would it, that would have made sense yeah. to do that. Okay. But she was not like a regularly appearing character. No, no. Yeah. But she had special superpowers. <laughs> it makes you feel any better. She had special superpowers? She could freeze time. Oh, who can't do that? Wait, 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 seriously, you just heard that? that could be done? That's true. And that is obviously something else that plays in the episode as well, because Hopper's Prime needs to see, because whenever she uses this superpower, uh -huh. it brings out the death's door, uh -huh. and the only person who can save her is Hopper's uh -huh. Prime, because he's built in exactly the same way. So, so actually they were tying that together. Well, that sounds like something that, that somebody in Sunbow would do. That is the Guardian robot getting his head it blasted is off. Blown up, yes. Oh, and by the way, the line about, uh, he says, uh, uh, do you know how many times I watched this as a kid? I, I, you know, it's a, hey, when a scene is good, a scene is good. I, I realize I wrote it, but this is a damn good scene. This is, and here's the other thing. You just saw 18 minutes of very careful build-up to Optimus Prime walking on and saying that line. It's basically the whole story is building up to that moment. And really, um, in the season one and season two prior to Transformers the movie, there's really no robot bloodshed at all. No. Except for Prime in this particular yeah. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Ripple dissolves. Ah, we have not your time. Because I just didn't think this episode had enough action in it. And it needed a little more. By the way, why did my episodes always get the crappiest animation? We were watching uh, what was on uh, just before the opening ceremonies. It was uh, it had a bunch of female Autobots in it. I know which episode you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it. Oh, there we go. Oh. Yes, it was the Alpha Yes, sir. I'm looking at it and going, damn, that animation is so much better than the animation I got. 
You know why? Because I was so fast, I was always the one, I, they plugged up the holes in the schedule with my script, which we, met, we had less time overseas getting animated. There you go. That's how you unleash a photon bolt. So, I mean, here we also have the area boss. They have no idea that they're about to get teleported back to the... Right, they're sacrificing so, themselves. So they're, yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. And this, I love this. I love this. I love that. That is... That is so... They did it so well. That's exactly what I saw in my head. I love that they did it just right. I don't know if anybody else gets that. I think that's, thinks that's cool. I think that's really cool. There's a line here where I think Megatron says when they're trying to reanimate the Guardian robot, he says a warrior doesn't need a head, just a good strong body. That's a steal from the movie Forbidden Planet. Uh, Captain doesn't need a, a, a brain, just a good loud voice. A steal, a reference, a homage. Oh, that's got our down goes Frazier. I love, it. I love it when they wrestle. Ah. How much can he take? This is excruciating, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Give yourselves a hand. Okay. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the like button and leave us a comment below. Also, spare a moment to share this video on Twitter, Facebook, and all your social media pages. To get updates on all of our latest videos delivered straight to your inbox, subscribe now using the link on the screen.